All right, we're back and we're finally in a position to give an update on where the bike's at. Feels like I've kind of been sitting idle for a while now, waiting for parts, waiting for bits and pieces to rock up before I can kind of take that next step on each stage. But we've just got a batch of parts in and I am kind of probably at the stage where I can strip it down pretty soon. So I'll run through the bike as it stands. We'll start with the front end. We've got the DX forks bolted up. 13 spoke late model sealed bearing mags. I ended up just putting the um, three quarter inch sealed bearings in. They sit a little bit wider. I wanted to run those fatter kind of bearings for more surface area. So we've got those bearings in. That needed, well, that required me to make new spaces. Since the last update, I've got a tiny little lathe over there, over there that I can start making bits and pieces for. So I've got a spacer there. We've got a spacer there. Um, I don't know what you call that. Some type of decoration cap, but basically I was just fucking around looking for things to make. So we've got the wheel centered. We've got Chopper House 13 spoke um, floating discs on there, and they are crazy nice. They've gone to the effort of making them align perfectly with each spoke on the 13 spoke mag. So my OCD is very happy. They're nice and tight. You've got 13 spokes of tight engagement. Um, compared that to these shitty golfers, which are already fucked after, what would you call it, 1,600 miles, 1,500 miles? This thing is like a tambourine. And, yeah, I've already bailed them up about it, and they, <laughs> they said, oh, I'm welcome to send them back to America at my expense, but they're fucked anyway. Um, we've got the radial calipers on there. These are cheap. I think Bagger Bros mounts, they were crazy cheap. I got them ages ago and they've kind of just been sitting in there. They're spaced out. They're centered. I was just mucking around making little bits and pieces. Um, but all these bolts will be replaced with ARP. Uh, moving up, we've got a super nice Big Al's Cycles. Fork brace, that goes perfectly with the entire colour scheme of the bike and the drivetrain. So you can probably see already it's going to be kind of black with a machined aluminium look to it. 39mm, uh, just regular 39mm triples. I don't even know what they're off. Narrow glide, probably sporty. I have welded on a new um, stop tab just to suit the, suit the triples. Old mate before me, I've, I think I said previously he, he fucked with the bike a fair bit. So he's grounded off these. So I've made new uh, FXRT fairing bunks to fit on there. Um, currently I've got a 30, uh, what is it? Just a knockoff quarter fairing. I don't think it's any kind of brand. I think it's probably just eBay shit. But it's pretty nice with a laminar lip. One of the main parts I've been waiting for are these risers. So these have come from my mate's brand new company. Uh, Australian made, Australian designed, Australian manufactured. He, yeah, he's done a killer job um, trying to come up with a design with a point of differentiation from everything else on the market. So super nice risers, all ARP hardware, nice design, nice clamping force, shouldn't be any issues there. He's come up with a keyed um, center clamp. So that opens up your options in terms of mounting a phone there. What I'm going to do is spin that around, mount a dash, like mount my Moto Gadget dash right there. So mount it there, bracket up, it'll sit perfectly. And he's going to come out with a double keyed centerpiece as well. So I'm going to have the dash up there, I'm going to have a phone there, and I'm going to be good to go. Fly Moto bars. Um, throttle by wire so I'm going to have to make a bung for that but 8 inch rise 2.5 inch um, bar but 1.5 inch pullback so normally I run a 10 inch total bar like the the built well ones um, that's 10 inch straight up this is 10.5 but 1.5 inch pullback so it's pretty comfortable actually moving to this point we've got the crash bar I've never really been one for crash bars, mostly because they're super low and I just don't really like the idea of touching it down. 
I had a chat with um, Dino, who does V2 Speed Co., ages ago about how shit low crash bars are, um, and he agreed. And so he's come up with this nice and high crash bar that will actually provide some protection without sitting fucking down here and touching down at the same time as your pegs. Um, so I'm real stoked on that. That thing bolted up straight away. He's made it so it's a bit wider to account for the chopper house motor mount. And that's super nice. Moving to the engine. Uh, since the last video, I've pulled it down. So what I ended up doing was pull, like I've pulled all the cam chest out of there. I've pulled the heads off, pulled the barrels off, pulled the pistons out. What I found was the pistons were basically brand new. The skirts had no wear through them whatsoever. Um, no carbon build up. If I have the ability, I'll put some bloody pictures in here somehow. But I've packed all that shit away. But essentially, yeah, they were brand new. The cam chest. Oh, this is a 2000 model motor. The tensioners had no wear whatsoever. Like you can't, you couldn't catch a fingernail on the tensioner. That's how how little it had. So I just pulled all all that out completely. I'm waiting for a fueling, um, what do they call it? I think it's just the OE Plus one, the silver one. So that full kit will get slapped in there. I'm still waiting for that, obviously, because I'm waiting for most parts. We're waiting for 570 Easy Start cams. Um, and I'm going the Easy Starts because I, like my local Harley dealer, doesn't have the bloody tool to put manual compression releases in. So normally that would be a super cheap, super easy job. Just to bloody put some compression releases in, but they obviously don't have it because no one in Australia has anything. So I'm going to run the easy starts to, to um, account for that. I think the compression I'm aiming for is about 10.5, probably 200 CCP, uh, 10 and a quarter inch SE pistons, 30 mil gasket. The only thing I've got to check before I order it is the um, deck height. So I'll double check that just to make sure I'm not at some bullshit CCP that is going to cook my engine, but it should be right. I think it's a pretty tried and true um, model. It's just, um, it's not rocket science. I just have to measure it before I actually order it to make sure I know what's going on. Makuni manifold in there, Makuni HSR42, um, Stealth, is it SS Stealth? That's an S Stealth air cleaner that I got for like a hundred dollars or something brand new the only issue is obviously with this Makuni adapter um, you need to space out your air filter otherwise you're like putting too much pressure on it so as soon as you run this adapter piece on there to put different um, air filters on there it spaces it out and you need to account for that I don't I don't even know who makes air filters now that that account for this aside from San Diego customs I think they're the only ones I've seen that actually have manufactured something that takes that adapter into account to fit a Makuni. Um, but yeah, I'll need to machine some little spaces for that. These are 103 jugs, um, like takeoff cylinders. So they're, what are they, nine? Oh, sorry, uh, 3.875, so which is 95 inch total. All, a bunch of shit's gonna get powder coated, that cam chest. That cover, that cover, they're all going to get um, powder coated, what is it, wrinkle black to match the rest of it. This oil filter, I had it in the last video, but you can see I've had to modify it a bit to account for this um, Bassani Lutzka pipe. Super nice pipe. I fucking rate it. I love any pipe that goes around the front cam chest. I know you give up a little bit in grand clearance, but whatever. Um, so I've got all that mounted. Obviously, being a diner pipe, your primary is about an inch and a half or whatever um, longer. Like this is this is longer, which means that you need to, if you want to put it on an FXA, you need to extend this mount. So I just chop it off on an angle. After someone told me, I make a new rear mount there, bolt the pipe up, bolt everything up, and then I see where this sits. Like I don't like welding a mount if if it's just going to be welding in a sake and then I've got to kind of bend the pipe to fit. So I'll cut that up, cut that up, 
mount it all up, get it bolted tight and secure, and then I'll see where it sits, and where it sits is where I'm going to weld it, so as I, I don't put any strain through it. And this one wanted to be welded on a slight angle. It is what it is. We've got a little bit of clearance there between your pivot blocks, um, but we should be good to go there. What else have I got? Um, oh, run out. I did check the run out while I was in the motor. On my dial, I had 0.07 mils, which is equivalent to about 2.7 there. So, whatever. I'm good to go for whatever we want to run there. Touring swing arm, like we talked about last time. Same matching pimp rotor. Um, we've got the Kraus O2, uh, what is it? O2 radial adapters for a tourer. Um, that only just came in. I've only just bolted that up. So with that kind of there, I'm now in a position to measure the lines. Oh, one thing I didn't talk about. Master cylinder. What I ended up doing there, I've made, you can see I've made a little brake rod that's not, it's not going anywhere at the moment, but it's there. Um, what I ended up doing there was kind of keying that mount in there. It's normally got four sides. I ended up using a file grinding um, eight sides and it lets you clock that position, sorry, clock that master cylinder in eight different um, positions. And the main reason you need to do that is, it's hard to see, that that little spout for your reservoir, it can't base but like directly up. It's gonna hit your transmount. So it needs to either face inwards, face outwards, face downwards, face wherever. It just can't face straight up. So I had to modify that a little bit. Rear wheel, we've got, what did we put here? Oh, I put, um, one inch seal bearings, but I put the fat ones. I didn't want to run those real um, narrow ones or the ABS type style ones. I've got the actual full width quad, are they quad or double seal? I can't remember. But the actual fat bloody bearings, it has a little bit of stick out, which isn't a drama, but it did mean I need to modify that spacer. Likewise, over this side, modify this spacer. I've got the Chopper House 13 spoke rotor on there, which again matches up to the wheel, which is stick. Um, one of the issues I didn't kind of account for is I've got this rotor space out a quarter inch and I've got a um, quarter inch spacer with the lip. What I ended up having to do, because this bloody bearing sticks out, I had to machine a little bit off the inside of the spacer to account for that bearing stick out. So once that was done, that let that spacer bolt on perfectly onto the lip um, without hitting the bearing and not kind of seating properly. And then this can bolt on straight after that. What else have we got? Uh, we got the peg mounts. Oh, sorry, the, the shock mounts. So these are FXR Division RP style struts to keep the shock mount in the right position. I've got late, I think late model Dyna shock struts that I ended up having to machine a little bit off there because it won't reach all the way into the inside of your your fender. So I machined a little bit off there. This later model shock mount lets me run, um, again, some of my mates rear shock mount kind of protection bars. Uh, these are crazy nice as well. All CNC uh, half inch drive on this end and then removable Delrin sliders. Uh, trying to think, what else have we got? That seat's not gonna stay. Like we talked about in that last video, this, this is gonna be blocked off for a stash box. I've got the other um, primary mocked up at the moment. So this is an O2 and this is the one I mentioned that was milled out. So it's got a center, um, like a center mount, center shift tube milled into it. Pretty straightforward. What my mate has done is milled this primary, just milled a hole in the back in the right spot. And then this, this shift tube is a one piece that goes all the way through with a thread on the end. And so it just sticks through the primary, 
there's like a, you know, you won't be able to see it, but there's a, like a bolt or an, a, an aluminium kind of fitting on the end that tightens it up. Um, that allows it to seal. It's in the right spot. So there shouldn't be any issues there. This, oh no, sorry, this shift lever is a, it's a diner lever. So normally diner levers sit up like that. And if you can see the offset to account for this, this bulge. But when I was putting it on, it looked fucking dumb. Like aiming, sort of aiming up and then aiming down. So I ended up just chopping it there and flipping it around and rewelding it to fit. Um, so now we've got a, a shifter mechanism that actually fits and doesn't look ridiculous. That's a little peg that I made on the lathe just for the sake of it. Uh, what else? Again, little, just lathe, lift some bits and pieces just to kind of tweak it a little bit. But I think that's the main point to really... Oh, fuck. My bad. The... The mid-mount. Sorry, the braces. So that brace, that removable brace I talked about the last time has been welded in. And that's been tacked in as well, which is that ramjet centerpiece. Once those were tacked in, that lets you kind of put your foot controls in the right spot. I think the only kind of tricky part of this is making sure you've got clearance on the inside to your peg. And then you need to have clearance from the the top of your exhaust to that peg as well because obviously once you bolt that in you're fucked you can't the only way you can adjust it is out you don't have that that lateral up and down movement so that took me uh one or two tries to make sure that i i had that in the right spot and i've got clearance everywhere to kind of uh, account for all of that but other than that we're kind of rocking and rolling the next steps for me are to measure Throttle cables, um, brake cables, to make sure I order all the right shit. Then strip the bike down, I think. I don't think I've got too much else to do. Strip the bike down. I need to do, I need to weld up all the bits and pieces I've modified on the frame. I need to, to weld up that. Properly weld all of these, just little bits and pieces like that, that centerpiece. Um, and then we're good to go. Here's a few bits and pieces from the people that have hooked me up and actually fucking helped me make some progress. Dino for making all the nice parts at V2Speedco. Frankie at FXR Cartel, who is also Dirty Customs. He, for an Aussie that, you know, it's next to impossible to order parts, he brings in a bunch of good shit and actually makes it possible to order all this shit. Like I've got, it gets me some power part plants. All the consumables and shit you need. So obviously if you're rebuilding a bike and I want to run a fucking 30 year old um, fuel sender if they're fucked. You don't want to run all the bunch of old shit like old master cylinders. So he's able to, to order all those parts and send them through. He's got this super nice um, matte black center fuel console. He's got a bunch of different options as well. So he's able to bring all that in um, to actually make shit like this possible. And that's a little motor I picked up. So SNS um, twin cam with Evo mounts. I don't think it's a very common motor. I, I don't know how many they made, but it's probably not a whole lot. But yeah, it's pretty interesting that yeah, full SNS twin cam, but actually mounted and manufactured to to bolt into an Evo frame, ninety five inch um, Timken bottom end. So that'll be interesting. Don't know what I'm going to do with that yet, but that's where we're at. If you've got any questions or comments, hit me up and I'll answer it. I've probably forgotten a bunch of shit I wanted to talk about, but they're the main bits.